Well, welcome back to Simple Truth. Uh, we're trying to pull some simple truths out of the story of David in 1 Samuel. We're in chapter 24, right? Uh, we are in the story of David having another opportunity to, uh, to kill uh, King Saul, who's been chasing him, right? And we're picking it up in verse 5, right? Uh, verse 5 says, Afterward, David's conscience bothered him because he had cut off the corner of Saul's robe. Now you can talk about it being conscious, just a, an idea of knowing right from wrong, or you can talk about it being the spirit that was on David. But for, for whatever the reason, David was convicted of that what he did. He cut off the corner of the robe, right, of Saul, the king. And it bothered him, right? I don't know if you've ever been in that place, Right, where you've done something, where even you think you have a right to do something. Maybe you've yelled at somebody. Maybe you've told somebody hard truth. Maybe you've made decisions to, to fire somebody, get rid of somebody, to vote somebody out. Maybe you've made hard financial decisions at home. Maybe you've done whatever it is, but you've made a decision, you've done something, and all of a sudden, your conscience, right, the Holy Spirit, speaks to you about what you did. Now, this might be something that for other people, right, it, it might be it might be okay. But for you, for this moment, the Holy Spirit speaks to you and says, hey, uh, you need to check this, right? And again, that's usually how it starts off, is that the Holy Spirit will be like, hey, did you do this right? Did God really say to do this this way? Right? Now, again, the enemy will do the same thing. He'll make you start feeling guilty. There's a difference. The enemy feels you get, makes you immediately feel guilty. You did something wrong, something terrible. Your immediate response is, I want to fight back. I want to prove that I'm not guilty, that I didn't do anything wrong. Right? Those, those who have the Holy Spirit, the, the response should be a, yeah, let me check this. Let me think about this. Right? The Holy Spirit politely checks you. Did, did, did you do this right? Right? And, and the more that you ignore it, the more the Holy Spirit might get a, a, a little bit louder. But just keep asking you the question. It just doesn't go away. Did I do this right? Did I do this moment right? right? We run into these moments all of the time. Right? Where did you, did you really do that moment right? Were you Jesus in that moment? Did the fruit of the Spirit come out in that moment? So David's in that moment where all of a sudden he's questioning. Right? And then it goes on and it says that... He, he, in verse 6, he said to his men, as the Lord is my witness, I would never do such a thing to my Lord, uh, the Lord's anointed. I will never lift my hand against him since he is the Lord's anointed. Right. So I need you to understand, right? We go back in time, we look at it, we say, hey, the, the guys said to David, hey, this is pretty much a no-brainer. God handed your enemy in your hand, so you should go and you should kill him. And David doesn't kill him. He just, he takes a corner of the robe. And then he feels convicted about that. And he makes a statement, right, to his men. That's what leaders do. They make statements. They come out and they boldly declare things. And he says to, to these men, hey, listen, here's the deal. I want you to know that I would never come up against the Lord's anointing. Not going to kill him. Right? So it may look and appear like God has handed him into my hands, but he's God's anointed. Therefore, he's God's to deal with, not mine. Do you realize that sometimes we, we, we love to take God's authority and God's power in how we deal with people? Where we should be saying the same thing. Hey, no, this is, this is God's. This person is God's. God needs to deal with them how he would deal with him. We put ourselves in God's place and we deal with God's anointed. The God's really clear about his anointed, that you should not easily come up against God's anointed. No matter how bad they are, look at bad king after bad king after bad king after bad king, right? People just walk up for the most part and kill them because they thought that they were a bad king. No, they, they let God take care of it. Manasseh, one of the baddest kings ever, lived the longest, right? 50 some years, right? God takes care of his anointed be really careful right but as a as a leader we declare things we make statements right that are for our people like hey here's how we're gonna here's how we're gonna run this 
be really careful about coming up against God's anointed. Do you think that those conversations trickled down into how the men treated David, what the men thought about David, right? Yeah, they probably did, right? Hey, if David's not going to take this, were there people who were upset? Were there people who were angry, thought God gave them into the hand, it's your right, you can do with them whatever you want? Yeah, there, there were people, just like in churches today, there are people who think they can handle people however they want because God gave them into their hands. They found out the information. They found out the bad things that somebody was doing. They figured out, right? And now they're going to get to deal with. Let's figure out how we're going to deal with this person. No, no. It needs to be about how God is going to deal with someone. Be really careful with how you deal with the anointed of God. By the way, that's pretty much everybody who is a believer of Jesus. They, they are anointed for a purpose. They've got gifts. they got callings, right? It, it, it's important that we team up with God for how he's going to deal with his anointed and that we don't do it ourselves. Chew on that for a little bit. We'll see you next time right here on Simple Truth. <laughs>